look at this. This is gorgeous. Absolutely stellar. But not perfect. Let's get into that. The Ursa Empire. There's a lot to love here. There's a lot that I've got some criticisms and critiques about. Let's start with the big centerpiece. The Crystal Juggernaut. Visually, this is very, very impressive. It's the first model I've actually gotten that I don't want to scale it down. Normally with these larger ones, I scale them down just a little bit, but this is a very, very well done model. That blend of bone and crystal is very unique, and for that alone, worth the purchase. And without having the thing in my hand, that's about all I can say. Looks like it would take a, a airbrush job really well, though. The Zarina herself. I got, uh, I got opinions on this one. The foot version, I really like. The pose is good. It's that classic pointing with a dramatic uh, sweep of the cloth from wind. It all works very, very well. It's a classic pose for a reason. And it's exactly what I would expect out of something that's supposed to ape that kiss love. Uh, what as they call it here? Ursa Empire. It just screams that theme that makes the entire costume just screams ice cream, winter sorceress. And the hat, you know, it's a little, uh, the hat crown, it's a little extra, but it fits a faction where, as we'll see, is all about hats. Love her. On foot. The same cannot be said about the sled. I really, really want to like it, but I can't. It's so dramatic and amazing, and the bears, and just all of it works so well. But the problem here is the base that they put it on. Ugh. I can't see myself wanting to print it. There's so much wasted space on the left and right side of it. That large iceberg underneath the sled the propping it up, the area in front of the bears, it just... You've got so much extra space. Why? Do something with it, and I can't say I'm... a fan of the entire model because of it as is. Maybe it's one that we would be better rebased? Starting with the Great Weapon Boyar. It's an impressive model. I love it. It's got this menace, this weight and confidence to the sculpt. Despite the stance that's foot on rock syndrome, but he still feels right. So right, I'm willing to forgive Foot on Rockness. He is a mountain of armor and just bulk. That bear cloak, yeah. The axe, the sheer size of it. The sheer fantastic size of it. Just sells. His equipment is nice, it's ornate. But it's not over the top in such a way that it makes you think it's going into a parody. It fits the theme of the costuming. And he's got a pretty cool hat. If I did have one complaint about him, it's that you don't get any choice when it comes to the weapons. I would love a little more change. Just a, a second weapon option. Just to... Add a little extra. Two sword hero. He's a fun model. It really fits the lightly armored side of this release. That mustache is just epic, let's be honest. And the costuming is on point for this faction. There was clearly a base that they were working with, and he captures it perfectly. That said, why two swords? Um, it's kind of cliche, and again, we're getting back to that lack of options. But I can get what they're going for. And it's less of an issue in his particular case because they are unique swords. They have the little spikes on the handle, the knuckle guard. 
and the tassels, and it is different enough from the regular every other sword in this release, what few there are. And it's a dynamic model, he's charging forward. So, you know, I can't, can't argue too much. This is a, it's a Russian Orthodox priest with a huge banner and a huge hat. This guy is all character, and I love it. The trappings of his office, the ornateness of the robes, the decoration, the axe tucked in the belt, the book he's holding, it all just sells this, yeah, this, this big guy's a priest. And he's going to walk straight into the enemy's lines, carrying that big old banner. Baba Yaga. This one. Oh boy, I did not have time to print her. But I like the character. I like the idea they're going for. And the pot is really cool. It's got some amazing little details in it that really captures the uh, horror aspects. That said, it does feel a little bit out of step with the rest of the set as a whole. I feel like it's a little more, little more on like the Halloween side of things. But cool model, I could see myself printing one eventually. So let's talk about bears. We gotta talk about the bears. I love these bears. These bears are probably my favorite 3D sculpt so far when it comes to bears. Every single one of them is excellent. The armored bear, though, holy shit, the armored bear is simply one of the best takes that I've seen on it. That fish scale male, perfect. And the sheer amount of detail on the faces and the nose and the snout is just mm, perfect. But wait, we're not done because air cavalry and they're everything that you would have wanted the riders don't just have reins they have chains to guide this animal that adds so much weight and authenticity to what you would need to ride one of these things that you normally can't really ride and these extra little bits of armor that are thrown in are just perfect they really capture the feeling of an elite unit that, hey, this man is so insane, he decided to ride a bear. And you, know, you, don't, you don't argue with a man who's decided, I'm going to ride a bear into battle. The czar on a bear. The bear leader. I really like this model for a couple very important reasons. One, he's wearing a very different style of armor than the bear riders or anybody else really in this set. It makes him look much more unique, like he's a part of something very different, if one will, than the rest. And it almost makes me think that when you look at the costuming for the bear itself, that he's in a bit more of like a bear cult than the uh, Ice Queen is, which is very, it's very nice to have that difference that said those little tassels on the bottom of the armor those things do snap off really easily when you're taking the supports up you're not paying attention he's just an excellent model overall i wish mine had actually come out perfectly but he didn't and he's gonna need a reprint eventually but until then you get to enjoy the uh, misprinted one where the mace didn't the final bear to discuss though is the undead crystal polar bear is actually larger than the ridden bears and the bears alone, which I very much appreciate. It's got a ton of theme, captures the mystical side of the set so nicely. Thematically, there's so much creative juice that you could get out of this piece alone. This is one of those pieces that you put this on the tabletop of a D&D game, your players are going to be running. So let's move on to the infantry and the cavalry of this set. The infantry here have to be some of my favorites when it comes to medium lightly to lightly armored foot troops. They're probably going to end up being the default that I'll print if I need a uh, sword and board soldier for something. 
the costuming and the style of helmets really sells everything. It's a perfect cold theme set with that and a medium armor to it. And while the lighter ones are wearing more cloth, but they've got muskets and bardiches, which are just excellent combinations for these lightly armored models. The weapon options are excellent. You got axes, you've got flails, you've got extra sword hands if you want those too. The sword is a bit silly because there's already mo- all the models already have a sword. Though for the armored infantry models, I probably would have liked to have, have access to a great weapon option. Perhaps a Bardiche, but the shield and hand weapons are just cool enough, and the posing is just excellent. They look amazing with two or three of them side by side. Sadly, though, the winged lancers I can't bring myself to like. They capture that feeling of a medium horse lancer. They're as ornate as you would expect out of any historical Wing Hazar inspired model, but there's some choices here that hold them back. The wings, I would have really liked to have had an option between single or double. That would have been nice. And I would have liked to have a uh, and the ability here to, with these sculpts to actually put in a sword, a shield, or a spear shield combination. As it is, these models are intended to be print to be printed with a horse, with the appropriate horse model, so that they have a their hand will connect directly to the saddle. Overall, I think there's a lot to love about the Ursa Empire set. The ice crystal theme here is done very well and it doesn't overwhelm the set. It's enough fantastical elements in a way that if somebody really doesn't like it, they can easily ignore it. That said, the Ice Queen and her sled is take it as a lesson in space. So let's rate this set. Playability, gotta give it a 10 out of 10. I could see myself using almost every model here for a wide range of skirmish games, role-playing games, whatever. Theming, 9 out of 10. The crystal is theme, the undead uh, elements, the fantastical and the historical, all of it works very well here. It's blended together very nicely. Excellent mix, 9 out of 10. The sculpts, eight out of 10, they're just lacking a few details here and there, a few weapon options. Uh, There's a lot of room for conversion, but that's not a crutch that the designer can expect to have. Printability, again, an eight out of 10. Uh, Overall, I had very few issues other than the small little tassels on some of the models and some other little failures that were probably a result of my printer being on the older side of things. Overall, I'm going to have to give this a solid A. Near perfect and an excellent buy for almost anyone who wants to print 3D models and needs needs a human uh, empire, a raider, anything like that. I would highly suggest heading over to their Patreon or to my mini factory before the end of the month if you want to pick it up or picking it up afterwards. It's still going to be worth it no matter what you pay. And damn, like that giant. That giant is just impressive. It's almost enough to make me want to go out and buy an airbrush. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to follow me on social media for all the news and updates. And I'll see you again soon with some more reviews.